Welcome to this rapid review on Las Pieras versus PASH indices. But before we get to those concepts, we're going to do a little bit of review. So in all of our formulas for price indices, we're going to be calculating the expenditure on some set of goods or some basket of goods. Um, and the general formula for expenditure is, expenditure being the amount of money you spent, is going to be P1 times Q1 plus P2 times Q2 plus P3 uh, three times Q3 and so on. So I'll just truncate that with a dot dot dot. And hopefully you're familiar with this expression. It sort of makes logical sense. The only real problem with it is that it takes a while to write out. Especially the more and more goods you have, the longer and longer it would get. That's why I just sort of left off with a dot dot dot. So what we like to do is have a more compact way of representing that. Um, and the way we do it is with this notation of P dot Q where P and Q aren't the price of any good in particular, what they are is like a list of prices and a list of quantities. So P is a, a list, P1, Q, uh, P2, P3, etc. And because of that, because they're not numbers in particular, when you see them in an expression, uh, sometimes you might see a Q in the numerator and the denominator, and you might be tempted to say, oh, I can cancel those out, right? Because they're in the numerator and denominator. Um, but you can't because they're not actually numbers, they're these lists, so they don't work like that mathematically. And we'll see an example. Let's remind ourselves of our two standard ways of measuring the price level. Our first was using the GDP deflator, sort of an indirect way of measuring the price level. And our general formula for GDP deflator, like our definition was, it's the nominal GDP over the real GDP. And we could write that as a formula. But I think it helps to express the GDP deflator using this dot notation that we just used. So in the dot notation, it'll be nominal GDP, which is current year prices dot uh, current year quantities. And then the real GDP in the denominator is the same formula. It's P dot Q, still using current year production, except we use the base year prices. And as I was saying earlier, you can't cancel the Q current in the numerator and the denominator because they're not actually numbers, but it sort of looks like they should. And if they did, if you just sort of ignore that part of the equation, you can see the GDP deflator tells us about prices. It's basically telling us about the relative current prices divided by base year prices, you know, the ratio of the two. If current year prices are higher than base year prices, then the GDP deflator will be bigger than one. And uh, the CPI also had a nice sort of formula that actually looks quite similar. The way we calculated the CPI was we found the cost of a basket this year as opposed to a base year. So the cost of the basket would be current prices dot quantities in the basket, and the cost in the base year would be the base year prices dot quantity in the basket. And now we can see how both of these formulas are quite similar. They're, they're both telling us about a ratio of current year prices to base year prices, but the GDP deflator uses the current quantities, the current amount produced, sort of to weight the prices, and the CPI uses this basket that we picked in the past. Um, so that's interesting. In a lot of ways, they're similar, but they have this subtle difference. And that subtle difference leads us to discussing the Las Bieres and Pash indices. So we can define, um, I guess for not to start with for notation, we'll talk about two time periods. So we'll have this notion of we can have t of 0 or 1. That would be 0 is basically the base year, and year 1 is the next year. And then we'll have use those as subscripts to denote, for instance, p0 uh, means prices. It's the list of prices in year 0, the base year. And then we could have p1, the prices in year 1, q0, q1 and so on. And we'll use that notation to define our last year's index and our PASH index. So our last year's index, oops, uh, index is p1.q0 over p0.q0. So like on the previous slide, it's a weighted ratio of prices this year versus prices in the previous year. And what you'll notice is when we put the formula for a PASH index up, the formula is very, very similar except for a subtle difference. So a PASH index will be p1.q1 over p0.q1. 
So the only difference is which quantities do you use? In a last year's index, you use the old quantities, the quantities in year zero. With a past index, you use the quantities in year one. Uh, and you might ask yourself, does this even really make a difference? And the answer is, uh, a lot of the time, not really, not that much. But in general, they won't give you exactly the same number. There will, there will probably be some slight differences. Uh, the, the general trend will be that because people tend to buy more of things that are cheaper, they'll substitute towards things that are cheaper or things that get cheaper, the Pash Index is going to put more weight on things that are relatively cheaper or things that got, that got cheaper over time. So the Pash Index is going to be lower. It's going to have uh, show, you, show you less inflation. So this will say um, understates inflation in general. And remember the pi symbol stands for inflation. And the last Pierre's index, on the other hand, will overstate inflation because it'll ignore the fact that the quantities change over time, that people can substitute towards cheaper things. If, for instance, the price of um, oranges went through the roof this year for some reason, the last Pierre's index will use the quantities that were purchased last year as if people were still buying tons of oranges and put a lot of weight on that and then show that uh, the prices are going up because orange prices are going up. All right, so let's do an example calculation. Let's make this concrete with some uh, example calculations. So here's our data. We have iPhone prices and quantities for 2017 and 2018. We have Android phone prices and quantities for the same years. We'll think of 2017 as year zero and 2018 as year one, and then plug them in and calculate with our formula. So let's go ahead and see what we get for the uh, price index for the last Bier's index and then for the past index. So we'll do last, we'll just abbreviate last 2018. Uh, and it'll be, as we saw on the previous slide, it'll be P1.Q0, so current, so, so new prices, $9 and $3, but old quantities, 10 of each. So nine times 10 plus uh, three, times 10 over P0.Q0, so old prices and old quantities. So that would be 7 times 10 plus 5 times 10. And then what we get is 120 over 120, so the last Pierre's index is 1. And essentially what that's saying is, as far as the last Pierre's index is concerned, prices haven't changed from 2017 to 2018. Now, if you look at individually, iPhones got more expensive, Android phones got cheaper, and the last year's index is saying, well, you know, it averages out. On average, phones cost about the same. Let's see what the PASH index says. So we'll have PASH uh, 2018. And that formula was P1.Q1, so current year prices times current year quantities. So that's uh, $9 times 7 units plus $3 times 13 units over P0.Q1, so past year prices, but current quantities. So that is um, $7 times 7 units plus 13 units times $5. And we get 102 over 114, which is about 0 0.89. So the PASH index is saying things are cheaper now. In particular, it's saying things are cheaper compared to the last Pierre's index as they are. And the reason is, we can sort of see it from the formula, it's putting a lot of weight on Android phones. It uses 13 here and here as the weight put on Android phones versus only 7 for iPhone 7 and 7. Um, and because of that, it looks at this trend of Android phone prices from five to three and says, wow, phone prices are dropping a lot. Now, of course, iPhone prices are going up a little bit, but they get less weight. So most of the, the sort of emphasis is placed on the drop in Android phone prices. And because of that, it's saying, you know, overall prices are dropping. Prices are cheaper than what the last PRS index says they are. So that's an example calculation that illustrates the sort of general rule we said, where the PASH index is going to say prices are cheaper than the last year's index says they are. In particular, it says inflation is not as big. Hopefully that was a helpful rapid review of these concepts. I know this one's a little tricky, um, and it's important to get practice calculating these out on your own and just sort of seeing the trend for yourself. Thanks for watching.